boy Big D down here at Empire Tech Fab Lab. Today we have the special guest, the ZR2, the 22 and a half. You might as well call it a 23, but if you want to be technical, it's a 22 and a half. ZR2 Silverado, 6.2 LT1 truck. This is a pretty badass build. This has been almost a complete year in the making, February to February. And we have Eric, AKA Eric on the keys, Z-Rock on the camera. We're gonna talk about all what we've done. You guys saw us working on this last year. Uh, the Arthur family, they always bless us with their awesome vehicles and entrust us. So this came to us directly from the dealership. We did a walk around a while ago and we'll put the links together. So the truck was bone stock. Kara wanted some more power. She came at us with wanting a Whipple. And we're like, well, no one's done anything because these have a global BE90 ECU. So we didn't know anything about tuning, what we could do. And at that time you could get the Whipple, but you couldn't tune it. All we had was a trifecta flash tune. So we're like, well, we'll get it up and running. We did a whole bunch of other mods to it. And then Eric has been working with HPT for quite a while now. And well before he came here to the, down here to Fab Lab, and then we've been using HPT for a while and we've been going back and forth with them on what can we do with this E90 Global BECU. So Eric kind of talk about what's led us up to having a tuned truck. And it may not be fully done because we still have the TCM, which we'll get to it, but you know, talk kind of how, how we got to this point. Long story short, we waited around for Global B stuff to be available. Um, and it's still technically in beta, which everybody knows that. This truck was a little bit of a mismatch between prior global and new global. Um, so it was a little bit fun on that side. Um, either way, we got through, jumped through all the hoops, talked to people at PRI, talked to HB at PRI, talked to them at LS Fest, seen how everything was going down, when everything was gonna be ready. Finally, they gave the go ahead for everybody to, well, most people. They're pretty, select They're pretty yeah. selective though on who yeah. they allow to yeah. use, you know, do anything with the global correct bee. maybe so. give the viewers a little insight on how much how new global b is like how different it is than past hpt stuff with well, dealing with you know silverados of past generations because everyone it, knows about those part of it start with a ecu that has to, that costs like freaking thousand dollars to unlock um and then a 400 hundred dollar unlock on tcm 12 credits but outside of that these have neural network like dodge does so they didn't have that until then until now, um, up recently. So that throws a whole new loop into things. You have to train the neural network, um, which takes time. I know it sounds terrible to do, but yeah. it takes time. It took a lot of time. Um, <clears throat> and then obviously there's a lot of different mapping. You can't just take a previous global A and like, oh, I did one of these and go over it and do this one. It doesn't work that way. So there was a pretty steep learning curve um, Which we, you know, we were even talking about trying to use the uh, Caddy Blackwing as a base, and it really wasn't even the same. No, no, yeah. no. We were kind of, you know, a couple of people I know were kind enough to give me over stuff from. Which other, we had a lot of help on this. So. From other Global B platforms, and some of it correlated over, some did not. So I had to use everything that I possibly could in my skill set to figure out what's going to work here, what's not going to work here, and then make all the changes necessary um, in between all of them. Um, you know, fuel pump controls, injector controls, the trucks have way smaller injectors than say a, a Blackwing or, you know, uh, a C8. Um, so there's a lot of differences involved. The truck is a little bit of a, it's a different animal than the other ones that are already high performance, strung out, if you will. Um, but we got through it, and um, at the end of the day, uh, overall horsepower, peak horsepower was about the same, okay? Um, I will state that. But the power on the low and mid range was significantly better. Um, not going to quote numbers right this moment in time, but everybody that's driven it has noticed it. Yeah. So um, that next thing is going to be is figure out why our TCM bricked the first time we flashed it. Um, HBT is working with us on that. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll get it back to them. They can unbrick it so that we don't have to get another unlocked TCM. So I, I mean, again. you know, if you guys really want to know the process, which was not easy, the whole process started of, hey, let's tune this truck. 
okay? We f the whole the massive process was even getting with HPT to talk to us because they're very selective. You know, like you have to be really high up on there and we value Eric's skills and they talked with Eric multiple times and we were allowed into that realm of tuning. So once that was over, which that was a half year of talking. Yeah, five, at least five months. Yeah, so once that, that was That started a, down at LS Fest when yeah, we went there and yeah. we're yeah, so to that was a, directly. Yeah, so yeah. that was at least five months of just talking to allow us to even get to the level of, okay, now we got to buy a brand new GM ECU because our reasoning behind that is if something happened, we wanted to be able to, because of trifecta flash tune, it was like $3,600, okay? We didn't want to start doing all this unknown and mess up or brick that very expensive flash ccu and have to spend that money again so the luckily <clears throat> the initial cost of a blank ecu from gm is very cheap in layman's terms i mean nothing's cheap but it's cheap and we're like okay the 10 speeds on here they do a lot of hunting and gears the transmission is something we are actively trying to tune and it's not something that we're able to tune in the time allotted but the 10 speeds are very amazing. The four platforms are killing it in the 10 speeds. Yeah. We're trying to do something sweet with these trucks and their 10 speeds. There's a lot of potential. And we will. Yeah. Um, but once we get the TCM figured out, like I don't want to put the new TCM. It has a new TCM in it already. It's which, stuff. which will happen. We got to, I mean, we're airing it all out here to show. So once we got the factory ECU, we had to take the truck up to the dealership and get it married. So we got the ECU married. We got, then we have, what we did is, <laughs> once we got the ECU married, we went ahead and pulled that out, pulled the TCM out. Then we sent it to our basically in between, which, that was, yeah, Scott. Too. Yeah, Scott at Tap Out Tuning, he was really kind to work with us. HPT was like, yo, deal with them. We sent the TCM out to him in the ECM. He then mailed it to HPT to get both of those unlocked. Well, we got both of them unlocked, which that is a really expensive job in its own. We got them both back. Eric then started working on coming up with a base. Yeah. And we can get to that point. And when he went to try and flash the TCM, for whatever reason, it bricked it. Which, brick, that's the terms that we use on air. It basically locked the TCM. Nobody knows why it locked the TCM. Not yet. We'll find yeah. out once it actually gets back to HPT. So it basically shut down all comms to basically the entire truck, where you couldn't even turn the ignition switch off. You had to literally physically just... <laughs> Dude, it, it was doing some weird stuff. Yeah. And, you know, all sorts of weird stuff was going on. So, unfortunately, we're like, well, we're going to have to buy a stock TCM. We're going to have to get that married to the vehicle. And we're going to have to forget about the TCM for right now which once again, we will get that cracked, but, and there is a lot of potential on the table for the TCM, mm -hmm. and that will help out a lot because their factory TCM, the shift points and stuff, as we talked about, there's a lot of hunting. Everybody that has a 10 speed, one of these knows what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so once TCM aside, Eric then began the long process of basically starting from scratch on yeah. tuning the ECU. Yep. And the only yeah. thing I, the only thing I had to go off of was what some people had sent me from stock uh, blower cars, Blackwing, uh, in particular. That was the only one I was really concerned about because it was going to be the closest um, for what I was looking to do with the map sensor that's in here and all that fun stuff. Um, so started the process with that. It was from scratch. I could not even pull the flash out of the trifecta ECU, so it was literally a bone stock map to start 100%. Fortunately, I mean, yeah, it took me a few hours to even sit down and make a base map going over everything with two freaking screens and everything. But everybody, know, everybody that's a, a reasonable tuner knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. So. And this was a, this was about a month process from like, hey, we have we have the part we have our new uh, MPV three, mm. we have that. Let's go ahead and start, and then it snowballed problems after that. You know, we burned up plug wires. We we're having issues with that because we'd switched to a different style. We ended up having to go back to OEM ones. We we're getting weird misfires. There was a lot, but it was literally almost every day for a month working on this. And that just goes to show you that's how hard it is to just accomplish half of the tuning process. We haven't even got into the transmission. Yeah. So, 
you know, these new platforms take a lot of energy, a lot of R&D, and there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle and a lot of people involved and a lot of money. But we are, we can proudly say we're one of the few people. I don't know if anyone has done this, so don't quote us, but I don't know anyone that has done this Global B E90 ECU in one of these right. trucks. So if someone out there has done it and they watch our video, we'd love to talk with you. If no one's done it, hell yeah, we're the first. So, <laughs> you know. So when it comes to the money side of it and the time, so one thing I do want to state, you see a lot of other people have done a lot of Global B stuff. Well, they've had to be able to spend the money to buy a black wing or buy a, a C8 or whatever <clears throat> and start going from there and especially their car. So they get to tweak on it every day, every time they get a chance. Um, but that, you know, unfortunately we didn't have that option, but also on the good side of it, we had the capability to have one at our disposal, literally 10 miles away. Mm -hmm. So that was a nice thing without us having to put the coin out there to start with to actually buy something of our own yeah. to do it because the truck alone. You know, you stops. got a hundred, hundred grand, call you it. know, I might as well call it a hundred grand sitting in here. And for us to invest that, we just couldn't do it. And once again, we show our love always to the Arthur family for their patience and their love and support because, you know, I personally, uh, it'd be scary for me to take something that expensive somewhere and then be like, hey, you know, do you guys know what you're doing? Because no one can tell me that you know what you're doing. And for us, I mean, there's no other way to put that. And they trusted us with it. And once we get this, uh, the TCM unlocked, it's gonna be a nasty animal. Once that gets done, we can work on some changing up some exhaust if they want to do it. Smaller pulley, more power, and it's really just gonna decimate the TRX that's in the family. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have anything to it's say? really gonna hurt the trx that's in the family the trx is gonna be the baby rex so um so we're gonna pop the hood i gotta deal with the customer real quick eric show them what's under the hood So as of right now, um, we're still running stock air box. Um, we will get around to an intake at some point, but we have to probably make something. So anyways, obviously, it's got a lot of miles on it. It's actually, what, 13,000 miles probably since the blower got put on? Yeah. Um, and uh, you guys are not easy on your vehicles, you guys. Yeah. Well, my wife drives this one, so it's been taken care of. But yeah, we're not very easy on them. We've all driven it enough to see what it does. So anyways, we'll shut it down and then we'll talk about some, a couple other little things. So literally, like I said, stock air box, whipple blower, that and the Stillen air scoop, the only modifications. Uh, we going over the Stillen air scoop before, it, with the hood shut, it did give us, this was before we tuned it, it did give us, uh, I don't know, it was like seven, eight more horsepower with the hood shut, which that's why you drive it, so why not? Um, and I gotta say, outside of the aesthetics, I did pretty much everything on this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. Yeah, right after it got done, we did drive it to, uh, we drove it all the way down to Florida and back with, without any problems and got like 16 miles a gallon. Yeah. And not any, not any kind of hiccups. Like, you know, when you have a modified car, you're always yeah. thinking, is it going to break down or is something, we have to do, we have to do something to drive it around and just drove it like a normal truck. We drove it like a normal truck the whole time. Except for when we went dirt drags with it. Yeah. It, it, did, it, it did get kicked out of the dirt drags here locally for winning the dirt drags too much by too much. Yeah, by a lot. By too a lot. Much. <laughs> Anyways, um, you know that's pretty much it. It's I love to say that uh, it always stays clean, but no, it pretty much always stays dirty. But that's okay. 
that's what a truck's for. Um, that pretty much covers everything that I have to say about the whole scenario. We will be moving forward and hopefully having the opportunity to do some more things. But obviously we've talked about the TCM. Hopefully we can do something with a slightly different intake setup. Don't know yet. It seems to be working pretty well. Um, it's not currently hurting anything, but if we do any other modifications exhaust wise, then we'll have to visit that. And obviously you know how that goes with the smaller pulley. And then it just kind of <clears throat> snowballs from there. But um, we're gonna keep it streetable and nice and drivable. It's not his C7 blower car. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's pretty much where we're at with it. And hopefully we'll make some more power with it and have this thing. I've got some ideas um, about this, uh, the TCM scenario, once we get around to that. Um, I've got some other buddies who have already done some pretty fun things with the Global B TCMs, which I'm going to pick their brain a little bit on. So. Yeah, the question we got asked the most on this car is probably from people that see it that are truck guys and they say, how can I order this truck? They yeah. think it's, they think it come, that it came from the factory like that because the work's so seamless. So. Well, you never know. I mean, we could be we always, selling we always, these power packs yeah. and just these yep. straight from the dealership. Yes, we'll be like, the, be like the next Callaway or whatever. Yeah. So. It's going to take us a little while to do that, but yeah. <laughs> it's getting there. So yep. There's a lot of beautiful work on this thing. Eric put in a ton of time behind the keyboard and the laptop screen, and we just made it happen. It's an awesome thing to have in the shop to be your first, potentially, to two one of these trucks with a whipple on it. Mm -hmm. so, stay tuned.